everyone, Julian here today. I'm gonna be showing you how to make over mono style future garage. You guys have been requesting this one for a while. Here it is. As usual, you can get this full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video. It's available at the top of the description. Definitely, it's a really great way to support the channel. If you guys enjoy these videos, go grab that. But also, it's something you can do right now to know, you know, really take your tracks to the next level today. If you grab this right now, I promise you'll make your best music. Really, it'll really help you. It's a really high quality template. So yeah, thank you so much for the support, everybody. And let's dive in. All right, so this is the template. We're at 130 BPM. And the first thing we have up here is actually like the main drums. So there's all these other, you know, things that you're hearing in the track, obviously, but this is what it's all sitting on. So it starts here really with the kick and snare, right? That's really where a lot of the groove comes from. So we've got this kick here, which is just this big, boomy, you know, future garage, almost like a very live sounding kick, right? And then we have our rim shot, which is two layers. And these are both from breakbeats. So this one I took, there was like this thing. I just took that one at the end, right? So you've got this nice punch, and then I made it shorter. And then this one, you can see, it's got the punch, and then it also has these little, like, hi-hats in there. And all that stuff comes together, like... Yeah, you hear that a little bit in the full mix, so all those little, like, percussions that get added from, like, the snare having that in it, You know, that's part of the groove. We also have this, which is another breakbeat sample, so I'll play this original breakbeat. And I just took that one tambourine, and I pitched it down so you can hear it gets like tss, tss, tss. And again, that's adding to the groove too. Like that's working together with this. So then we have you can hear just nice swung 16th note hi-hat right on top of the mix we have this thing so this is from a break beat you can see I took this and I, I pitched it down a bunch and it's just that you can hear it's kind of sloppy it goes a little bit off the grid but that's what adds to that you know future garage kind of feel you can hear how that fits together with that hi-hat. Then we also have this. So this is another kind of like percussion like that. Where it's actually this. I think it's the end of this break. It's like a snare. It's either a kick or a snare. And you can see I reversed it. And that adds a nice little groove in there that's got a high pass filter. We have this little breakbeat sample. So this is like the end of this, right? You're just getting that. And that's going through a bit of overdrive and that's just kind of like, it's all these little things in the beat, you know, that come in and out that I'm showing you now. Like first you get the reverse, then you get this. See how that kind of like these three elements add a bit more groove that wouldn't be there with just the steady stuff that's going over and over. So then we have this club. You know, just simple 808 sound. I tuned it. And then the last thing down here, which is actually adding a lot of motion and a lot of what you hear in the drums, which is actually an 808 core kit. So what's happening here is it's playing this pattern. Like it's literally just the core kit, 808. And then first I put on a glue compressor, which is super heavy. But as you can hear, what it does is it kind of it almost sounds like the cymbals are being side-chained now, like they're sort of bouncing off of the kick and snare, and that gives you a really nice groove, right? And then I distorted it. High passed it. All 
right? And then I just side chain into the kick and then to the snare. And now that just sits underneath everything really nicely. I noticed that when I was hearing their tracks, I wanted to show you guys how to do that because I think that's one of those things if you don't have it, it's pretty good, but it just, it definitely won't quite be as solid. And match up to what you're hearing on the record if you don't have that. Right, so then next we have all the synths. So the first thing here would be the bass. So this is a really simple bass line. Actually, we're in the key of B minor and it's going B, D, and then G. So root note, minor third, sixth. And we've also got these like octave slides, right? Very like drum and bass style. The main thing with that is just putting it like, you notice it's right on the four or here it's right on the three. So it goes with the drum. Right, you want that to really play off of what's happening in the drums. And that's how it's all, that's how these are going to make sense rather than just having those slides just to have them. So then for the actual sound, it's two layers. This one, this just like two saw waves detuned a bunch inside of wavetable with a low pass filter, right? Like a nice wreath. And then this one, which as you can hear adds a bit of width. It's a square wave and a saw wave detuned a little bit. Low pass filter, unison, chorus, and then it's being high pass. And then just fit together like that. We don't need any effects on them, just turn it up loud enough. And it'll be good. Then we have this thing. So, the way this thing is working is basically, this is following the chord progression. If you actually look at the root notes here, it's the same as I just showed you in the bass, right? B, D, and then G. But it's these top notes that are changing. Right, so here, this is pretty simple. We're in the key of B minor, and this is literally just a B minor chord, or a B minor, like, dyad, I guess, where you can see, you know, root note and minor third, right? Then it jumps up here. That's just the minor seventh, as you can see, right? It's just two notes down. But it's jumping up, and it's walking up to B up here. So now this our little arp is D and B. So this is actually kind of like the opposite of what's happening down here. But because you're holding on to this, this D here that you've been... See, like, it kind of makes the art feel more together. Because that same note, even in the last one here. Then it's G, but we're still going up to the root note there. So by having that as a part of every single art there, you can see it really makes that feel cohesive. Other than that, it's really simple, but it just it, it creates a really good rhythm. Having like a do 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 so, for the actual sound here, what we're doing is we've got, well, first there's some add some random, just a tiny bit of it. So, it's just a little bit of random velocity. You can see I've got the envelope velocity turned up on the filter here. So, you know, you'll get a little bit of variation in the synth and it'll move around a bit. And this is just one saw wave going into a low pass filter with an envelope that's pretty plucky, as you can hear, and a little bit of key tracking. And then the amp envelope is pretty similar, right? You want that to be very short with this. We have a bunch of vibrato, and then the glide is on. Then we have the hybrid reverb, and there's not much of this really. Like, it might not seem that reverbed, but when you turn it off, you can tell without it, it's not quite got the same feel. You know, this just kind of puts it in a room. So we've got this plate down here. I've got a bit of amp here without that. That's obviously the thing that gives that, that kind of like very mid-rangey fat texture. I've got a high pass and that's it for that. 
Then we have this pad. So what's happening here is, you know, this is meant to be kind of like musical texture, right? Like it fits over the chord progression, but it's not exactly the same chord progression. So you get something. Right? Now the secret to this is it actually is kind of following the chord progression. Like this right here is a B minor chord. This is just using, you know, fourth, ninth. Then we go up to D major, which is the chord there as well. And here. We're still technically kind of following it because if you see, you know, the note there in the chord progression is that's a G major chord. And sure enough, we have a G there. And then we're going down to that. Right? So it's just something that's not exactly the chord progression, but it fits well over top of that. And it follows the same stuff musically. This is this pad made with FM synth and operator. Right? You can hear it's like a pretty crunchy sound. As these can be sometimes. It's just a few sine waves detuned a bit. Low pass filter and then a bit of LFO on the oscillator crossfade for A and C. Then we have a bit of band pass. Right? And that's got this one six, so it's like quarter note triplets. And you can hear that with the beat. It creates like a really nice rhythm. Like it all fits together really well and so that's a big part of that sound. I've got a bit of chorus on it, this drum bus, and then no reverb. Then we have some vocals. What these are, it's basically just a bunch of different little vocal samples that I had, which are honestly pretty. With the ones around, like oh, you got from me and Ella. And also this one down here, where is it? We are we. Right, I just took all these little things, just kind of chopped them. I pitched them all a bit differently. You really just have to use your ear, right? Like what I'd recommend is don't start with these. Start with like you know, get the progression first, get some sense. And then once you have that, you can go and add these. And again, like, if you pitch them enough, they'll get in key like that, and you'll find cool stuff. So this is just going through a bit of chorus, a bit of reverb, high pass filter, and this auto pan, which is doing half notes. So it's making it, this isn't doing any panning, it's on zero, and it's just affecting the volume, but you're getting this, like, it's like, kind of like fading up in volume like that so that's really nice and then the last thing we have down here is just some vinyl noise bit of a bandpass filter made with an EQ but this is very important of course you want to make sure this is in the background and there we are so that's gonna be it for this one guys I hope you enjoyed as always make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and let me know what you think of this video in the comments if you want to make the best music you've ever made in your life grab this project file I promise you it'll take your tracks to the next level I'm really I'm not just giving you guys a bunch of a sales pitch here this really is I'm telling you I put a lot of time into studying this stuff and I'm really trying to put out some high quality templates to help you guys take your tracks to the next level and help the next generation get there quicker. So, thank you so much for the support, everybody. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video.